are we? Is it? Yep. All right. We are recording. And I want to appreciate, I just want to say I appreciate all you ladies for being here today. This is 96.1 The Beats Town Hall. We did a couple of these uh, a while ago for um, uh, the voting and just the Black Lives Matter movement. We started it off with those and they were real good town halls. They asked me to do a lot more. I've been wanting to do them, but um, I didn't have this StreamYard site and I got it today and I ran into a little bit of technical difficulties, but we're going to make it do what it does anyways. I appreciate you guys being here. This is national, national. It's the last day of National Women's Month. I wanted to do this more than just once during the month, but uh, I couldn't, but we're going to make it work today. I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, this is a town hall about uh, why it's important for women empowerment. And uh, before we get into the meat and potatoes of everything, once again, thank you for being here. And if everybody else wants to introduce yourself, I'm going to step out so uh, the ladies can have the floor. Well, hi there. I, I will start first. Um, my name is Jackie Abram. I am the author of a book called Hush Money. And uh, I'm a native of Colorado Springs. Super excited to be invited here today and uh, looking forward to talking to you, ladies. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rachel QB Riley. I'm a documentary photographer. I drove across country last year to document the protests across America in um, response to George Floyd's uh, murder. Uh, I guess I'll go next. <laughs> um, I'm Nohea, and I am a community outreach coordinator for Kingdom Builders Family Life Center. Um, and we help families and individuals that are dealing with domestic violence. Um, and my nine to five volunteer gig um, is as a board member for the Pikes Peak Children's Museum. And um, for some of you guys that have been following that for a long time, we are finally opening a children's museum. Our grand opening is April 10th. I know, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'll go next. Um, that's exciting, Nohea. So thank you, 96.1 The Beat, for having us here. Um, I am Yolanda Avila, and I have been in Colorado Springs since 1958 uh, and uh, grown up here um, on and off when we weren't uh, traveling through the military. I uh, had a great uh, run here and um, enjoying myself as a city council member and serving the community. And uh, I'm sure you'll probably be asking more questions and about this later. So it's great to be with all these wonderful women that are on this show. Okay, I'll, I'll go next. I think we're all sort of not wanting to speak over each other, which is great because we're nice ladies. So I'm uh, Sam Christiansen. I am um, I guess I'm here in two capacities. One is uh, I'm one of the founding members of the Chinook Center uh, community organization here in Colorado Springs. And then um, my other, well, one of the other hats that I wear is I'm also an assistant uh, professor of history at the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. Um, and in my previous lifetimes um, have directed um, women's studies programs as well. So that's, that's who I am. Well, I can go next. Hi, I'm Tracy Ong, and um, I'm a teacher at Colorado International Language Academy, which is a language immersion school. Um, we serve a really diverse population of students, and I really, really enjoy that. Um, I really enjoy empowering them um, in education. And um, I'm also an adoptive mother, so um, big in the adoption community here, and just really believe in that. Um, and also my husband, um, is an immigrant from Myanmar and um, we've been married 21 years and so um, also have a real passion for that as well. So nice to meet you all. 
Hi everyone, I'm Jen Cancelier. I'm with the Colorado Springs Independent and Business Journal, and I am super excited to be surrounded by all you amazing women today. So thank you for inviting me. And I was one of the first people to introduce myself, but I wanna make sure that it came through and that um, anyone who came in a few minutes late heard my introduction. Did it come through okay? It did. Great. We heard you, Jackie. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll just go now. Um, hi, my name is Regina English. I am the vice president for Harrison School District 2 Board of Education. I am a nonprofit founder. I have a nonprofit called BU where we mentor young men and young ladies through leadership, all inclusive. I have a pageant system that's called Yes Ma'am, where I mentor young ladies through the sport of pageantry. And I am also currently a candidate for City Council District 4. Thank you for having me today. Sorry, was that everybody? Uh, uh, Lady Lat, there she goes. Goodness, please just stay with me. All right, Miss Latina, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody one time, please. Okay, so <laughs> we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. Uh, once again, I appreciate you all for being in here. This is an amazing room full of amazing ladies. And I just want to say this is about why women empowerment is important. And the thing that I can remember from when I was a kid, one of my favorite stories to tell is, I, did, uh, I didn't vote for a while, and then one time my grandma asked me why why I didn't vote. And I, I told her that it really didn't make any difference for me. And she told me that I should vote for all the years that she never got the chance to vote. And I, I was like, and it surprised me. I was like, what, you never got the chance to vote? She told me, yeah, and I've been voting and doing all of that ever since I've been a kid. My mom is a teacher. My auntie was a teacher. My mom is a retired teacher. My auntie is a retired teacher uh she's the vice mayor or she was she was the vice mayor of wichita kansas they wanted to run for governor and all this other good stuff so i never knew my father my mom was always my father my my staple so i understand what women empowerment is i just want it's national it, it goes more than just a month for me it's it's a year-round thing hey jen how you doing i'm sorry i'm talking you want to go ahead and introduce yourself yeah, I got kicked out four times. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was trying to. I was trying to add you in there. I don't know what's going on. I don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I'm glad to be here, and it's nice to see all these beautiful women that are here. I know every last one of them, and so I'm really actually excited to see um, what they have to say today in regards to Women's Month, but also in regards to what they're doing in the community and in real life. So I'm excited to be here. Everybody knows me, Jen. Um, I work um, at CELA, Colorado International Language Academy, and also um, co-founder and director. Oh, no. That wasn't my fault. That wasn't my fault. I know she's going to get at me when she come back on. That was not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't... I heard you guys, I heard you ladies talking about technology earlier, and this is a part of it right here. You know, you need it, and then some, when you need it, sometimes it doesn't always come through for you. Jen, that wasn't my fault, Jen. That wasn't, that wasn't my fault, Jen. All right. I'm back, and I don't know if you guys can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got you. I can, I'm back. I can you hear you. Can hear everything I said? Not no, everything, got cut off. but. Did you guys hear everything? It cut off when you started talking about oh, well, uh, was, what yeah, you do. So I just start there and be done. <laughs> Can you guys? Uh -oh. oh, no. 
<laughs> all right. All right, so we're just gonna we're gonna slide into this thing, right? So it's the last day of National Women's Month, which isn't enough, but what does National Women's Month mean to each one of you? I'll, I'll leave my second question. I, I won't put them together. So what does National Women's Month mean to each and every one of you? This is Yolanda. It means to me is like women stepping into their power. When I think the suffragists for a hundred years, we were not able to vote. And then women were given the right to vote. And black women weren't until 1965 given the right to vote. It means pushing, working, being determined to, to, to make things happen. Myself, I've been in predominantly male uh, careers. I was a criminal investigator for 21 years, and it was mostly men that I worked with. And what happens with women and what we were able to do in the field when we did our investigations is that we brought a whole new perspective, a perspective of community. We looked at things a lot different. And uh, with that information, I was able to win a lot of trials. And so uh, it, it, women bring such a unique and wonderful perspective. And now here on city council, unfortunately, there's only two of us again, male dominated. And it, what it means to me is showing and illustrating how much women and diverse women bring to the table and how it's so much needed to make our society better and to continue forward. That's it, whoever wants to jump in. Uh, I, I can step in here, thanks Yolanda. I think that was a really great opening um, statement and a really good focus for thinking about um, what Women's History Month means. Um, as a historian, um, uh, um, you know, by training and, and trade, I, you know, sometimes I think about these months and of course we always have these conversations of, um, feeling the need to point out that that doesn't mean that all history isn't women's history and that all history isn't everyone's history. Um, so we want to sort of think of it as a way to just take pause and and remember that um, for a very long time, uh, you know, there were a lot of stories in the historical narrative and in the popular consciousness that weren't deemed kind of valuable or worth being told or worth being highlighted. Um, and so even though hopefully a lot of us have moved to the point where we want to hear and value those stories all the time, um, we're going to continue to set time aside to make sure everyone is hearing and valuing those stories um, in, in sort of designated periods. So for me, I feel like it's a great opportunity once a year um, to just kind of, you know, tie the bow on what should be the work we're doing all, all year long. And to piggyback off of what you you said I'm a, I'm a documentary photographer and as a mother I felt it was necessary to go and see how other young people around the country were responding to what was going on and as a mother I was able to ask and as a woman to be able to ask the questions and approach people with compassion and hear their stories so that would be able to Share my shared their stories with my lungs. And it, my my industry also is a male dominated industry. It's um we know the Steve McCurries, but we don't know any other famous documentary photographers out there. And our stories as a, a woman of color, our stories are important and we need to be confident that we our stories will be told truthfully and honestly with compassion and caring and humanity. I'll go ahead and jump in at this point. Um, so I, I liked what you said about um, telling stories and so when I think about um, women's empowerment I think about women in general um, no longer being afraid to uh, step out of the shadows that we've been in for years and for coming out and being bold and brave and courageous enough to to tell the stories, like you said, um, about 
people, not specifically just women, but all people, um, but especially people of color. And so in my role as an author and an anti-racism consultant, that's what I do. I, I tell the stories um, that are based on true events um, about various people in our community and even outside of our community, but stories that need to be told, but for various reasons, either it's a limited resource or um, limited funding or limited ability, they're not able to share those stories. And so that's when I step in and that's what I think um, women's empowerment is. It's just stepping out of the shadows and, and being courageous enough to to let your light be shined. I'll, I'll pick, yeah, I'll piggyback. Um, I think this month more than anything um, reignites how, if we put all of our voices together, all of us, all these amazing, powerful, beautiful women, the amount of change and power that's available, um, that, that's what a reminder is. The stories, the history, the women that we don't hear about, like Jackie and Rachel both said, is the more that we uncover that and the more that we take those stories and use them to ignite us forward to make change and positive change within our community, that's what National Women's Month is to me. Like we become one voice versus individual voices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, true. Um, I think for me as an educator, um, mainly with t 20 years now, um, I think that, um, oh, I'm sorry, how funny. Being a teacher, that would be the intercom coming on, <laughs> calling for a student, sorry about that. Um, so I just think that it's kind of, giving history in a new perspective. I think I grew up, and even in the early parts of my education, it's so male dominated in our history and even white male dominated in our history. And so I think that's my job as an educator to make sure that I'm giving a new perspective of history um, from the view of lots of different people um, from lots of different places and also women's impact and all of that. And so I think for two months in a row, it was such a joy for me do, teaching social studies and history because it was such a focus on, you know, with Black History Month and then with Women's History Month, I was able to teach about so many incredible people that changed our history um, or that helped change our world now because of their role in history. I also think that it's my job as an educator to constantly be teaching myself so there's so much I didn't know and so much I didn't realize the impact that other people made. So it's my job now to really teach myself all of that and then to be able to impart that on my students. And I think little by little, you know, we're just helping to change education and giving kids the amazing confidence to realize, you know, that they can really be incredible history makers themselves and that the people, people in their lives, you know, people in the past have helped change the world in incredible ways, not just white men, but lots and lots of different people. So I think that is what I love about all of this so much. I guess I'll end it with just saying that I love all of the answers that everyone gave. And just for me, on top of all of the responses is reminding ourselves that okay to celebrate us sometimes as women we we forget to celebrate small moments and big moments and this month just is that reminder to you know shout from the rooftops like hey we are amazing so that's what i love about it it's a great time for change and there's so many powerful women that are helping bring about change nowadays i i love this i, I love this room i Every time I get in these town halls, it's always a learning lesson for me. I like to just sit here and just listen to you, guys, listen to you ladies speak. So another one of my questions for you is um, what what um, what uh, lady woman did you look up to that kind of got you involved or, or sparked that inside of you to do what you do today? 
So can I just chime in real quick because I didn't actually answer the first question because I'm having some uh, I'm internet sorry. issues. Can you guys I'm hear me? Sorry. Yep. I can hear you, Regina. Oh, okay, what I was going to say is um, empowered women, empower women. And for me, I believe women bring balance to leadership. And no matter what capacity we move or operate in, there is strength in numbers. And as women, we should support each other, like, no matter what, because we can get so many things done together. And the momentum we bring to many different things is, is huge. And just being able to be an influential woman in a meaningful way speaks volume. And I know there's a lot of women of influence on this call. So just embracing that and each and every one of us to continue to push us forward, no matter, like I said, no matter what capacity we're choosing to move in in community is going to be very important here moving forward. Thank you. So I didn't have a close relationship or didn't have a woman figure in my life. My mom and I kind of struggled with um, mother daughter things growing up, but really this community and the women that I'm surrounded by in this community have been huge figures in my life. Um, Dr. Rosina Bakari by far is the most influ influential woman in my life right now. Um, she has told her story, which is a hard, very difficult story, but she is raw and honest about it. And through that, she has empowered other women. Um, and so I, I want to speak to that is that as a child, you may not always have a perfect role model or somebody that you look up to as a female um, person that inspires you, but man, as a 38 year old woman, like I have found and the women that are in this room right now have inspired and empowered me to be stronger and better. So. I would say the women, and thank you for that, because again, we are a strong group of independent, strong minded women. And I would say I was brought up by a single mother who was brought up by a single mother who was brought up by a single mother. My grandmother, my grandmother and my great grandmother were my inspiration. They were the first women that, the first people that came here during Operation Bootstrap from Puerto Rico. And they came by themselves. My grandmother came with a, her, her classmate and who was it lighter skin and could pass and they put my grandmother in the back of the train but she worked in the sweatshop in new york city and um paid for every one of her family members to come here from puerto rico as well as my great grandmother who came she was a, a cook on the sugar plantation and she came with her son on a boat to puerto from puerto rico to, to new york city and they showed the strength the resilience and they didn't give up and i think that's what the most important message is for me for all women is as women we don't give up we don't usually have a choice to give up because you have to get up every morning and make sure everything is going we're the beginning of the day and the end of the day for our families and our communities and i think that it is important that we remind ourselves that we, are, we have strength and i am grateful for the women in my family and the women i surround myself with every day The, the woman I look up to is my, my mother. Um, my mother was an amazing woman. She was full of courage and strength and grace. And she was the type of woman who could take nothing and turn it into something. And so she taught me over the years how to do exactly that. Um, she was very protective. There were six kids in her family. Um, I was the youngest girl, 
And um, she used, you know, rather unconventional methods to keep us safe. Um, I'll, I'll give you a funny example. Imagine years ago, she's a single mom with five girls and a, a brother for me who's not born yet. And to ensure that we were never um, put in any kind of harm's way, you know, from men as we started getting of age, my mom carried a gun in her purse and she would show it to anyone who thought they were going to become a would-be suitor until we became of proper age. And so that just gives you an idea of the type of mom I had. Uh, she was fierce. But again, she was full of, of courage and beauty and strength and grace. I'm going to follow that um, up with my mother. She is totally my inspiration and in why I'm here. So my mother grew up, was born and raised in Mexico. Adio de Rosales, Michoacan. She was very wealthy. Her dad was the wealthiest man in the town. She ended up going to college where she met my dad. Now, my dad was born in Garden City, Kansas, where he was raised, and then at the age of 18 was deported uh, during the Mexican roundup. So my dad ended up uh, being deported to Mexico where he never lived, but he met my mom at the teacher's college. So when um, my dad was drafted into the service, into the army, he brought my mom and the two older children back home. And my mother had never, ever in her life faced discrimination. At that time, the swimming pool, only uh, whites swim. Uh, black and brown people could not swim until the day before they were going to clean out the pool. And at the movie theaters, uh, black and brown people had to sit in the balcony. And uh, the white sat, sat in the orchestra seats. And in my family, we're, uh, we have, I have family members that are very dark and black eyes and then family members that are light-skinned and green-eyed, and they separate our family. Part of us would sit in the orchestra seat and the other part in the balcony. But my mom was like, she would not have this. So she, uh, in her limited English, she would go to the grocery store and they tell her to keep getting down to the back of the line. And she, in her limited English, would say, I'm first, I'm first, I'm not gonna go back. You do that because I'm Mexican, but I'm first and I'm going to go right now. And so what she did was she organized the, the all the Latinos, the Mexicans there, and said this cannot be. And she got a hold of the city uh, elected leaders. And she actually was responsible for changing the rules where all people could swim all the time and that people could go into the to the movie theaters and she did this you know we there's seven of us at the time and now there's five but she constantly got involved to make things a lot better she was the role model for me and then when she came to colorado springs she was part of uh, the community, uh, Latino community, in creating the festivals, the three-day festival that we had every year through the Fiesta Bonita. She was the director and the dance, a dance instructor for all the dances that went on. And it, when you see ballet folklorico right now here in the Colorado Springs area, that all comes from my mother. She was the original uh, dance director. So I have so much to look forward to. And I lost my mom in January of... Um, 2020 it was a very difficult year last year and um i still count on her to to keep moving forward what yes, was the gonna... questions ladies like I, put... my, I don't know why it's just going in and out but what was the question mine did the same thing but i put it in the chat as the most inspirational woman um and a role model because I mine went out 101 times literally, so I'm back. I think for real this time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. we keep telling mommy stories, um, and I'm gonna say one too. Mine is like the complete opposite of Jen, the other Jen. Um, my mom is somebody that I talk to every day. Um, she is the best friend that she probably wish I had a different one because I call her all the time, <laughs> and um, she inspires me about everything. She tells me she's old school. Like when we were in high school, everybody's mom was like a young buck is what I called it. My mom was older. So she's like 10 years older than all my mom, all my friends' moms. And so she was like everybody's mom. 
everybody calls her mom still now. And they wanted to spend the night because of her, not me, <laughs> in my house. Mm -hmm. And so she sit there and tell them stories. And she inspired one of my friends to go to the military because she was a runaway. And this girl now is like a major sergeant, whatever. She makes all this great money. Um, we're not as close as we used to be, but she's closer to my mom. <laughs> so I find out with my mom how she is and everything. So she inspires, I think, the world, I'll say, because anybody she runs into, she has this spirit that makes you just want to tell her everything. You'd be like, why did I just tell her all this stuff? But she has that spirit. And um, I just pray to continue to be able to walk like her because she's so humble. And she's just the person that I always wanted to be growing up. And even now, like, I always look at her and say, you know, that's the woman that I want to be. And it's always good to have a mom that you can look up to because um, a lot of people have a lot of mommy issues. Most of my friends do. So I guess God sent me those so that my mom can help them because it's just that way. But I'm just excited to be able to say I have a mom and she's here. Um, couldn't even imagine life without her. So that's my spiel. Um, and, and I'll say that um, my mom, too, is my best friend. Like we can talk about any and everything. And we don't talk every day, but we talk just about every other day. And my parents divorced when I was young, when I was in elementary school. So I watched my mom turn nothing into something. And she was one of those moms that, you know, at, when they divorced, she was a single parent. So she would take us to work with her. And, and we had this big van. And sometimes me and my brothers and sisters would have to sit in the van and do our homework. And, you know, then she would go and order food and make sure we ate. And so my, my mom is, she, she's a woman full of strength. A couple of years back, she had a quadruple bypass and she's still here, just wow. feisty as ever, you know, being bossy and, and, and doing her thing. And it's like, it never even happened to her. And I'm like, wow. And, and my kids, they always say all the time, they'd be like, all right, Geneva, because my mom's name is Geneva. And I'm like, do I really act that much like her? And they're like, yeah, mom, you act just like your mom. And I'm like, well, that's a good thing, because my mom is an amazing woman. And I'm blessed that um, God chose her to be my mom. So, yeah, she, she's a very inspirational woman to me. And and even in the face of adversity, she she didn't allow anything to break her. And, and, and I know that's the way I am now because um, I'm dealing with a lot of that now. And so, you know, since I've been in this race, I talk to my mom every day just to kind of help navigate through the process. So it, it is good to have a mother that you can look up to. And of, of course, other women, you know, I have Colorado moms because my mom lives in Michigan, but my mom is my solid rock queen of all queens hands down but i do have some influential women here within uh the state of colorado that's also very instrumental and amazing in my life and helping me be a better woman for me i have two people um one is one is a friend who's like a big sister <clears throat> her name's shelly crouch and she's really taught me how to um speak out she speaks out when when needed against inequality and things that aren't right and things that aren't fair. And so she's really taught me how to speak up and speak out about those things um, in our in our community, in our country, um, in our faith. I think, too, she really helps to point out things that need change and need fixed in that area in politics um, and, and, and education. And we taught together as well. And she really showed me how to bring the community in to help. Um, educate the children um, to bring in moms and dads that can come in and also share so much um, how much they can enrich the students. And then also actually the other person is actually on here. It's Jennifer Smith, um, who's really taught me how you reach out to the community. She's beautiful in that way. It just blows my mind. If um, any of our students um, or friends or people, families in our community need anything, Jen helps make sure they have it. So if they need shoes, if they need backpacks, if they need clothes, um, anything, Jen, make sure that it happens. And I just feel like she's got this heart of God kind of person that is just ready to help anyone in need. She's helped our family when they needed it. Um, and she's just such an incredible resource and um, such an inspiration to me on how you are selfless and how you find out where needs are and meet those needs. So. That's mine. 
Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Have- I'm going to share really quick, but then I'm going to disappear. We've got um, a crisis situation, so I've got to call one of our partner hotels, but I will be back. (laughs) Um, But for me, um, I actually grew up with parents that were junkie alcoholics. And so my grandmother um, literally saved me and my sister. Um, And so my grandmother has always and will always be my inspiration. Um, She's 80 eight now and um, she literally just this past year due to COVID retired. She was um, a counselor in um, the prison system and worked with men and women counseling them. Um, (laughs) And she retired last year, but she's actually back working part time because she was just like, I can't do this. I'm going crazy. So she's just one of those women that have always worked so hard and definitely speaks her mind. She's got the greatest stories about being fired because she just told the truth. (laughs) That is just who she is and she's amazing and hilarious. And I hope when I'm in my 80s, I'm still kicking and working hard and (laughs) as crazy and firecracker like she is. So, um, but yeah, keep the conversations going. I'm I'm loving all of this, but I am gonna uh, take my camera off for a minute and get this situation taken care of but thank you ladies i think i'll I'll jump in here at the end i i really appreciate everyone's sort of appreciation for the the women in their sort of close personal lives and um would echo all of this regarding my own mother and and my my grandmothers that i sort of saw in in the most intimate way as role models but i also want to touch on aspects that a couple of people have hit on as well um, you know, as an academic and as a historian, um, you know, it's both through the course of education and then once you're in the field, um, it is also a very male dominated field. And some of the most inspirational women to me have been, you know, mentors that have taken the time to look around and see um, women that are in the field and that are, you know, sort of up and coming and have have really taken the time to notice and um and listen and and i think that you know some of those those powerful women who who are here today i mean i i would name names of christina jimenez who's the chair of history in uh at uccs um was particularly um a mentor to me both when i was a young undergraduate and then later when i returned to colorado um as a faculty member as well um and others during graduate school that just you know saw the the role and the responsibility that I think most of us sort of embrace in our lives now that um, recognizes that that part of having been given that mentorship and support when you needed it is, um, you know, you feel this sort of deep drive to provide that um, to the women around you. And I've been the really, you know, benef- uh, lucky benefit, uh, had the lucky benefit of, of that mentorship and um, just just try to find ways to reenact that in my own life um, as it is. Amazing. I, I remember I got to throw a story out about my grandma. When I was a kid, uh, all my big cousins were throwing a rock in the backyard. and They told me not to do it because I was the smallest kid, but they wouldn't let me do it. So they all left. And then when they left, I pick up I picked up the rock and I started throwing it. And I threw it through my grandma's greenhouse window. And and it was so funny. She she started coming outside to catch me, but I took off around the corner of her house and I started running. And when I was running through her house, my grandma was running and I looked through there and we caught eyes at the same window through the kitchen. Then when I got outside in the front, she put me in a headlock, gave me a whooping, gave me a whooping and then bought me a transformer then later on that evening. So, you know, I just want to throw that out there. My grandma is super dope and her 90th birthday is this is the 17th. So we're going to go out there and celebrate my grandma. Just had to throw that out to you. You guys were talking about all your amazing women. So I had to throw my grandma in there. And JT, but she's excellent because she's the Aries. Just letting you know. Oh, I I will let her know that. I will let (laughs) my grandma know. She showed me how to plant and all types of stuff. So. Yeah, I learned a lot of I learned a lot of what I know now from women in my life and uh, uh, big ups to my aunt Carla. Uh, She passed away a long time ago. She was one of the first ladies I knew when I was a kid. She was she was throwing shows. She introduced me to superstars when I was a kid. 
Uh, she she knew Nelly's family when she was young. Uh, she was a real influential person in my life as well. So I just want to give props to them. So there's a movement. There's a ladies. There's a women's movement going on right now. So if you could pick what something that you would want to be seen in the forefront of this movement for for each and every one of you, what would that be? Guys, hear me? We are so kind. Somebody, can, can go. Does anybody want to go? Because I'll can, go. Can, can you guys hear me? This is yeah. weird. Okay, I don't know what the heck is happening. Did you hear the question or no? I, yeah. What do we? Something. What do we want to be remembered for in this movement that's coming, or that something we're we want to see? Yeah. Something we like to see in this movement that's coming. And be at the okay. forefront of. Were you going to go, Jen? Oh, yeah. I thought Regina was going. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to be. That's why I got quiet after you repeated the question. <laughs> no, I just want to see more um, positivities, more excitement. I'll give example that jam session that we just had with um, Jamon and um Jackie with the book signing, I really was shocked because we planned that with the board um, probably like a couple weeks. And then I heard that a book signing was going on. Shout out to Sam at the Chinook Center for allowing us to do whatever we want <laughs> for one body. But anyway, just to see that when I walked in there, the way that people were just like moving around and smiling after COVID being so negative and not knowing what's going to happen next. That's the first time I think I felt like I was worried, like a fundraiser, a book sign. I'm like, this is going to be crazy, a lot going on. But it was very good. I mean, it turned out really well. Like, that was like something that I want to see more of. More of people smiling and having a good time. No negativity, which is always going to be, but <laughs> less negativity. And just something good to do, something exciting to do in the community that everybody wants to go to. And smiling and happy. Just more stuff in the front front like that. Just more stuff like that. So if you missed the jam session, you can go look at it. It's on the it's on our website. It's a picture on Regina's website. It's on Jackie's website. There's still stuff to go and look at to see what happened that day. But just more stuff like that. Okay. And I, and I have to say, because you brought up the the jam session and the the book signing, um, you know, God works in mysterious ways. And what could have been a problem having the events double booked turned out to be the biggest blessing you could imagine. Because without knowing, I was double booked with my cousins who I hadn't seen in decades. And it just really brought me back to my family here. And so it, it ended up just for me personally being the biggest blessing that you can imagine. A family reunion. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So um, I'll, I'll say, oh, oh, go I'm ahead, sorry, Regina. Jackie, were you done? Well, go ahead because I need to grab the door real quick. So I'll jump back on in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So, yeah, I would like to see more unity and more positivity as well. We, we have so much negativity going on. Um. So that's why I protect my energy at all costs. And and just this this movement and this time that we're in, it, it does need to be more positivity because it takes more energy to frown and be mad and upset than it takes to smile or be kind to someone or just be positive. So I, I would like to see more unity instead of like, different pockets of select people doing their thing. I just feel like there's a bunch of people doing a lot of the same things. And like when we can really come together and, and maximize the opportunity to have something even greater than all the little pockets of things we have right now. Um, th those are different things that I would like to see more of community coming together and, and working together. And, and just to go off of what we were seeing the, about the influential women, I know Jackie signed off, but Jackie came into my life literally like 
a month and a half ago, and she has been very influential, very, very positive, and she's been keeping me on my toes during this campaign. So shout out to Jackie. She she is amazing, and I'm proud of her and her her book signing and and all that she has accomplished. And I'm just I'm proud to know you, Jackie. I love you. I love you right back, sweetie. <laughs> Um, so um, like to, oh, go ahead, I'll oh, go ahead sorry, Sam. Go ahead. Oh, okay, I I will go ahead because I could see who, who the other person was. So I'm sorry if I'm speaking over someone. Um, but I and I'll just be briefly kind of amplify the same sentiment that um has been addressed regarding um you know if we're thinking about a a women's movement or a movement of women um you know one of the things that I guess I would really love to see more um and it is it is present but could be more. Um, is the idea that womanhood is such a vast and beautiful thing and there is a whole multiplicity of, of womanhood uh, that exists and, and there are intersections and, uh, uh, you know, distinctions that, that make the experience of, of womanhood different um, and that, that that's good, like we can celebrate and, and be excited about that. Um, and for me, for me, you know, speaking for myself, I think as we continue to think about um, women and empowerment, I just want to particularly today as it is Trans uh, Visibility Day, want to just make sure that we're saying out loud that that women's empowerment includes all women and that's, uh, you know, cis women and trans women and anyone who uh, identifies as a woman as a woman, <laughs> you know where I'm going. So I, I just wanted to kind of add that, you know, call, amplify that call to unity that was already so well said. I'll go next. So um, when I think about the movement that's occurring right now um, with women, I also think about the other movement that's um, occurring in tandem with that. And that's the, the movement for equality and uh, racial justice. And so when I think about those two things, I actually connect them together. And I think that women play a really big role in speaking out and helping people to, you know, I'll go back to what I said originally, step out of the shadows, because a lot of times, you know, we as women, have not had a voice. We've had to hide and speak quietly in the background why our male counterparts stepped out and took the lead. And so I would challenge everyone and I would encourage everyone, women of all races and all walks of life and all genders and all backgrounds, we have to step out. We have to be willing to let our voices be heard. And you know, again, for me personally, that's one of the reasons I stepped out of my comfort zone. Um, you know, I was a, a leader in corporate America. The last position that I had, I was a director of Title IV Quality Assurance and Training. A very, very well-paying job. Um, but after the brutal killing of George Floyd and Ahmaud Aubrey and Breonna Taylor and, you know, the list goes on and on, I realized that my calling was different. And so I pulled myself out of corporate America and decided I wanted to tell stories. And so that's just my own personal journey. But I, I think there are so many women um, that can just do amazing things like, you know, Stacey Abrams, for example, and the, the movement that she put together um, to get and inspire people to vote, uh, people of color, Black people. You know, so that's what I think about when I think about um, the movements and, you know, what I would like to see and, and what my contribution can be to that. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. I, I, want, I want to speak on that because as a white woman in our community, I think we have a lot of white leader women in our community yeah. and they, they need to learn to step out of the way sometimes. Like we have Regina and Yolanda on this call right now who are taking a big step and leap in, in doing something that you don't normally see. And so as a white woman, I wanna support Yolanda and I wanna support Regina with their voices and making sure that we're getting behind that and not stepping in front of it, just like you said, Jackie, is like making sure that we're elevating those voices as 
women, white women, you know, and, and that's something that within our community as Colorado Springs, you see a lot of white leaders that are women. And sometimes they need to step back and step out of the way and give that platform to someone else. So that's something in our community that we need to do better about. And that's, that's what I'm working on in this movement, both in women and in justice, is stepping out of the way and giving that platform to somebody that deserves that platform. Thank you, Jen. Um, when I think about uh, the movement, I like to think about the economic and political power that's happening. Right now, still, the CEOs of all the major companies uh, there's more men named John than there are women. And so we still have a lot of work to do in those positions. And those are powerful positions that we need to see women of all colors there. And uh, and we need to all be allies there. And political um, arena, we do. We need to see women more and more because it's in the political arena that we make uh, the laws, the statutes, the ordinances. Uh, that affect the city. So I'd like to see more of that on every level, whether it's uh, school board, city council, county commissioner, uh, state rep, uh, senators. We need to see more and more. And then uh, there's a movement, and I love like the young, uh, the young. Well, for, for me, they're all young. The millennials. I, I heard this young woman named Danielle for the International Women's Month, and. You know, she said that she she went through a lot, lost a lot of energy deciding on how to dress, to dress to make other people feel comfortable, in particular white men, and whether pulling her hair tight in a bun and wearing a black um, blazer. And then she finally just came to the conclusion that she did her best work, her best work. She's biracial, so she had beautiful, long, curly hair and and she wanted to wear that bright purple dress and and she she said she did her best work when she was authentic and so i'd like to see that movement continue with the lessons i'm learning from the millennials that they have been um been more authentic and and telling the stories of not closing up when you're going into the workplace or whatever it's like uh, maybe child care issues or whatever issues that come up just talk about it because you find that when you she shared that when she shared that among her colleagues at work they were so supportive and she was even uh, able to do it better so being our authentic self and moving forward and and, and locking hands with each other to 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 continue forward I think mine is mainly in the area of curriculum, just working really hard um, to amend and change our curriculum in ways that makes a positive impact on such a diverse student body that we have. I just think that they just light up. I mean, their eyes light up when they see, you know, in the curriculum, um, whether it's characters or whether it's someone in history, you know, that looks like them. Um, it just makes such a positive impact in our, um, in our classroom and um, on them personally. Um, I also just think my daughter, one of my daughters is adopted from China and, you know, just a lot of things going on right now within the Asian community, um, you know, in the news and all of that. Um, but just being able to talk with her, not only about that, but then educate her on the amazing, you know, impact, um, you know, Chinese people had in our history as well. So like flows in my classroom and changing the curriculum and then also just to my own family and teaching them, even my biological daughters are half Asian. So I have three daughters, <laughs> but um, yeah. And so just um, showing them those documentaries and helping them to understand these things, I think um, that's just what I want to be in the forefront of within my family and then the students that I'm blessed to work and teach with. I think we lost Everyone Rachel. Go. No, Rachel kept trying to talk, but we couldn't hear her. Oh, now so she's gone. Yeah, so I think she's gone. But I do want to give a couple of shout outs um, and also piggyback on that. What we want to see, I want to see more of this. I like this, what we have going on here, because we have Latin, we have white, we have black, we're all here. And a little picture at the top, the Women's History Month picture, you guys can see that? That looks like us, if you look at it, like it actually has all of us on there. It's not just all blacks and all whites or whatever. So I like to see that. 
And I want to give a shout out to Chiba for putting this on because he does a lot of work. If you guys hear him on the radio, he does more than just that. So just give him a shout out. And all the women that actually answered when I said, do you guys want to be on this panel without a question? Um, Shelly is the only one that couldn't be here. She's not feeling well. But everybody that was asked actually came. So I do appreciate you guys. I respect you guys. Um, I've been knowing some of you guys for a very long time. Um, so I do appreciate you guys growing with me and doing this journey. It's a lot. <laughs> so I really, I know you guys all understand that, but I do appreciate every last woman on this um, panel for being here today and just being able to understand the woman that they are. Because the first thing about being a woman is knowing who you really are. When you don't know who you are, you can't help anybody else. So, all right. Thank you. And I just want to say, Jen, like, uh, not Jen Smith, the other Jen. <laughs> Jen um, th thank you, Jen, for being courageous enough to call that out and acknowledge that. Like for me, that's huge. That's very, very important. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for calling that out. I really appreciate it. You ladies are amazing. Thank you, Jen. So what my next question is I got every time you, every time I hear you guys talking I get another question in my head. So what can what can we as males do to help the movement? What what can we do to better where where we're headed to? You know, I can go first on this. Um, there's there's been a lot of movement um, of the men in the community, like the, like the hundred men and and different things that the men are now starting to do to collectively come together and support each other. Because the the first thing is they have to support men have to support men and strengthen men so that they can continue to be the backbone for women and and protect us and help push our movements forward. So for, for me, men just need to continue to cultivate the relationship between themselves so that they can be strong enough because where we're headed, it's gonna take um, both men and women as, as a unified group to really stand strong and stick together for the things that we're, we're gonna be facing here coming up in, in our world, not just our city, but in, in the nation. I'll piggyback off of that, Regina. Um, as somebody who um, works in an organization um, where we're you know, helping families and individuals with domestic violence is, you know, we're all coming from different backgrounds and some of us with some trauma and some of us with some heavy trauma and just being able to own up to that trauma, to own up to our past and being willing to um, just open up and connect and ask for help. You are not a lesser man because you ask for help. <laughs> In my eyes, you are like a superhero for stepping up and having the balls to ask for that help that you need. Um, <laughs> so, you know, just, uh, yeah, I could talk about that all day long, but just having that um, ability because, you know, women, we take on so much and we can't always be the ones saving ourselves and everybody around us. And yeah, we need, we need the men who are willing to step up and help to save, to save us. Um, all of us. Um, so what Regina said, I mean, there are, there's amazing men in our community and I think we're lucky to have them. And I just hope that they continue to spread um, that good power that they have. Um, and hopefully that just spreads to all of, all of the men in our community and just all over the place. Uh, I'll go next. Um, uh, so, I know it's Cesar Chavez day today. And um, when he passed away, the natural uh, next leader would be Dolores Huerta. But the men in, in the movement, the farm workers movement, didn't allow her to be, even though she was the leader. And so I would say, especially in Latino communities, that let the women, not let, move aside on that area and let the women in because we're having that issue here now in, in the Latino 
uh, communities and organizations. We have women that are really strong and capable and I would ask the men to either say as partners, be as mentors or create that space with other men and say, no, we, we, we've got to vote for this person to, you know, to be our next president, our next chair. And uh, I think it would behoove men to, because when, when you think about it, men have daughters, sisters, moms, uh, and it's only gonna, when a woman is able to lead, uh, and take that power, it it's, creates the role model for uh, all the women to come. And when men and women both are strong leaders together and, and at times take on different roles, it's just going to make the community much better. But I, my biggest thing right now as I watch things right now unfold, it's like, let us take, a, you know, lean in and sit at the table. We're done being the menu. Um, that question. Um, I'm actually reminded of a conversation that um, one of my male counterparts had with me um, a couple of decades ago as I was trying to climb the corporate ladder and, and get my foothold. And what he said to me at that time was, behind every man is a good woman. And that was, you know, two decades or so ago. So I would challenge men to now flip that and say, behind every woman is a good man. And this could be applied in all aspects of our lives from the workplace to relationships. If you are in the workplace or, or in a government position or what have you, and you know that there is a woman who is better suited for that position than you as a man or your male counterparts or coworkers, you should be willing to get behind that woman and be the good man that we know you can be. Um, I just want to say well said because my mom said that, so you are a good woman for that. <laughs> good job, I like that. Um, I would just say to men, men in my own life, and um, actually a lot of awesome men I know too, but um, so um, just being okay to let us lead, like actually really being okay with it being okay with women in power, um, lifting us up, being an encouragers, and then voting, vote for women leaders um, in our community and our country. And I, I'll just kind of jump in on the end here. And I, I think I would preface this by saying that, um, like many have stated, you know, I've been really fortunate to have um, men in my life who've been enormously supportive of, of me and I continue to meet, um, you know, those who identify as men in our community that are, um, you know, dedicated to equality and dedicated to um, improving our community and improving themselves and recognizing that all of us have been socialized and raised with all sorts of stuff that we're um, carrying around. Now, hey, I, you mentioned that we're carrying trauma and um, we all, so many of us are and are still unpacking that and trying to figure that out. Um, and I think just, you know, being there, um, for each other, uh, and whether it's it's men for men or men for women or women for men or or, or whatnot, if, if all of us can just kind of commit to um, recognizing that we all, you know, carry a lot of baggage that we didn't choose, um, and we can choose to work through it and have grace for each other when, um, you know, we we stumble because everybody stumbles um, at times. I think can be really beautiful, and and when I see that kind of um, mentorship. Um, that sometimes is really casual. We talked about um, earlier, you know, powerful women mentors in our life, but um, sometimes I see that kind of casual role modeling taking place from older men in the community that are really, you know, illustrating to younger men the, a way of, of kind of not embracing these kind of aspects of like toxicness and, and um, that you can be, um, you know, you can have a masculinity and you can have a, a, a man's identity that, that doesn't buy into a lot of that stuff. I think that that does a lot for men. And I think it does a lot for women because with the more we can kind of, un you know, start to just dismantle this stuff, the more it helps us all.
So shout out to the guys that I see doing that every single day. And I know we've already went over an hour. I promised Tracy that I wouldn't be the one to make sure that we wouldn't go over. Um, That's funny. I was just about to come in and say and say that. Uh, but this is I want to give is, a shout out to the men, right. though. I do. I want to give a shout out to the men. Oh, well, thank you. I'll take that on on behalf of them. Of us. You, know, you're, you're, <laughs> you are one of the hundred men. If you don't go to the meeting, it doesn't matter. You are one of those men. So I meant to go up there that day with I had my son, but then we stopped by uh, Carmel. I was sent to go up there and find Tutu and get a smoothie, <laughs> but I didn't see you guys. So I went up there and I took some uh, some drone footage that day of the that uh the new what was going on. Yeah. yeah so i didn't get to make it but the next one i will be there for sure and this is the longest town hall that i've had so far and this has been i don't want to shade any of the other ones but this by far has been one of the best ones that i've been involved with i just want to thank all of you for being here and um i don't want to take your time so i'm gonna i'm gonna tie it up a little bit if you guys i'll let you guys go ahead and just say what you have going on right now individually so like a a promo a flyer if you have any events anything going on if you want people to come and join your movement anything like that just go ahead and let them know and we will have some more town halls i'm going to try to do these more and more often so we'll get you all in here no technical difficulties to make sure everybody can get their piece out there so if you guys have something that you want to let everybody know that's going on with you Please go I'm ahead. Go first because I wanted to say something about the men again. I do have to give a shout out to my husband because one body in tea would not be anything without him. Um, and I like the statement that Jackie said, behind every good woman is a good man. And my husband is amazing. If you don't know him, I don't know what to tell you. Because then you don't know me. <laughs> so one body ENT is both of us. And so I just have to give a shout out to him because even with the town hall meeting today, like I wouldn't be here if you wouldn't tell me about it. So he knows a lot in the community. He loves Colorado Springs. He's a diehard Coloradan, if <laughs> that's a word. <laughs> so shout out to him. But just to let you guys know real quick, we do have the Juneteenth coming up, 18th, 19th, and 20th. We are doing fundraisers every single month for that. We just did the jam session. We're about to do um, the Pikes Peak Park with Sean um, on the 24th. He is donating uh, proceeds to that for uh, Juneteenth. Um, and then we're doing a brunch May 2nd for the Juneteenth. So we're just trying to bring money in for that. That's a big event, something we've never done before. Um, if people want to see some positivity, come to that. And you want to be like what Regina just said, not your own little pockets, bring it in, come together. That's three days of something that we can do um, together um, and then make it successful by being positive and come out there and have a good time. So next. And I have to just jump in because I'm about to burst with excitement to tell your listeners. Um, I am really, really excited about what Jen said, first of all, because as she's giving kudos to her husband, her husband just happens to be one of my cousins that I had no idea was my cousin until Chinook double booked us, which turned out to be the biggest blessing for me. So super excited about that, but even more excited, yay, more excited to announce that I am one of several people who is sponsoring a huge fundraising event to raise money for the Chinook Center. It's on April 17th at the Chinook Center. It's at 3 p.m. I'm going to be autographing my book, Hush Money, How One Woman Proved Systemic Racism in Her Workplace and Kept Her Job. And I just want to say, I know I wrote this book, so I'm a little biased, but it is an amazing book. You, you don't want to miss this. And at the event, all you have to do is pay $15 at the door. My cousins, the Exums, who own Taste Bud Rescue, they're going to be providing free brisket, pulled pork, ribs, um, the works, all the sides, all the trimmings. 
if there's going to be desserts galore to tempt even the most noble appetite. Will you wait? My daughter is so impatient. <laughs> okay, uh, let me finish what I'm trying to do here. Okay. okay. And so please come out um, on April 17th so that we can raise as much money as we can before I leave town to begin my national book tour. And my daughter is about to drive me crazy. She wants me to let you know. She will also be making her custom perfumes from Luck and Morris. Uh, many people have bought her perfumes. There are, they're amazing. So this is all gonna be going on on April 17th. It's the last book signing, a chance to raise money for Chinook and then I'm on my national book tour. So come out and support Chinook and see me. Um, so just gonna, quick, no, go ahead, oh, sorry, sorry, I just want to close out. I really appreciate both Jen and Jackie you really amplifying Chinook Center and, and the work that we're trying to do. And um, so I don't want to I don't want to, you know, spend a bunch of more time talking about it. But, you know, I hope that folks, um, you know, if you've heard the name today and, and you're not familiar with the work that we're trying to do and the movement that we're um, trying to come together, you know, our, our tagline is building community and people power. And, and you know, when we build people power, we, we build power for all of us. When we build community, uh, we build power for all of us. So I am grateful and appreciative to everybody here and to this entire community. Um, and hey, I'm sorry to, to, to have cut you off there. So um, I'll, I'll wrap it up with Chinook Center. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Um, so twofold um, for Kingdom Builders, if you have a passion um, to work with individuals that are dealing with domestic violence, um, we are definitely gearing up with our volunteer base. Um, so just let me know and I would love to do an orientation with you and get you um, in here to help us uh, just continue doing what we're doing. Um, we have to actually put people on a wait list right now because we just have so many clients that we are helping, um, but yeah. I, I love what we do here daily. Um, and then my nine to five volunteer uh, job is with the Pikes Peak Children's Museum. And for those of you that might not know, we've been trying to get a location for years for, um, in this community. And so we are actually neighbors to Chinook Center. So we're right in front of them. Um, so 2565 Airport Road, and we're gonna be doing our grand opening April 10th. So if you've got kiddos, definitely um, bring them by and we'd love to meet them um, and just show them that learning is fun and it's all about play. Um, and parents come in and play with us. It's I go to children's museums with my kiddos all the time and I have as much fun as they do. So um, I'm really excited to share this children's museum with the community. Well, I want to give a shout out to our school, which is um, Colorado International Language Academy. Um, you can find us at cilaschool.org. And we're a free public charter school, um, K to fifth, that focuses on academics, language, and culture. We're a language immersion school, actually. So half the day they're learning in, a, in another language and then half the day English. Um, and we really celebrate diversity. So if you're looking for a place for your children, to come to school. We're an incredible community at Colorado International Language Academy. And I don't have anything specific going on <laughs> right now, guys, outside of the election. Everybody vote April 6th. Our vote our voice, voice, our vote matters is very important. And I do have some things coming up towards the end of the year, but I'm sure we'll get back together before then is it's going to be the relaunch of Yes Ma'am and Be You. So I'm excited about that. So stay tuned for that. Awesome. And I'm just going to wrap up uh, exactly what Regina said. We are at our lowest of people voting right now for city council. Please, please, Please get that out. People need to turn in the ballots. They're uh, due April 4th. Regina, is that right? No, they're due no. April 6th. And Six. right now, um, we only have 13% uh, of the ballots back in. The city sent out over 300,000 ballots, and we're nowhere near having those ballots turned in. So, but I will say District 4, it's a different momentum right now. We are already over the threshold. We have more votes than we've had in any of our local level elections. So like, it's a big deal for District 4. So I just encourage everybody to vote, whatever district you live in, it's very important to vote. 
Yep. Thank you, Regina. Yeah, thank you. Get those in. Uh, super important. Also, huge, huge shout out to Keichiba, Jennifer, for inviting me on this. I so much appreciate you. Um, biggest thing that we have coming up with the Chinook Center, uh, Southeast Express and KOAA are going to be doing a monthly check-in live from the Chinook Center. So um, be checking in. It's all about Southeast um, and what's going on in that community. So super excited for that partnership. So thank you so much, Samantha, for putting that together. Um, and thank you again, Jennifer and Kate Chiba for, for making this happen. This is my second town hall that, I, that I've actually been in on. So I'm super excited uh, to listen more. So we will have more coming. I just want to thank all the ladies, all the powerful women in the panel for chiming in today and taking your time out. Like I said, this is the longest one I've had. It's been the best one. We will have some more of these. I promise you. I'm sorry. I, I, we should have had a one before this to talk about voting. And I dropped the ball on that one, but I won't do that anymore. Um, big ups to all the educators out there. My mom, my auntie are retired teachers. Teachers should get paid like doctors. That, that's the fact because you guys, you guys Literally. inspire and educate people to be better. You know what I'm saying? So big yeah. ups to all the educators out there. Um, yeah. <laughs> this has been, it's been a great uh, town hall. I appreciate, again, I appreciate all the ladies here. Uh, make sure you check this thing out. It's going to be on all the, uh, all our social websites, all our social sites on the website. And I'll have a flyer for you guys later on so you can let everybody know to check this thing out Friday at 3 p.m. All right. Thank you for coming in today. See you guys all later. All right. Thank you, Thank you for creating the space, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.